my 2020 road trip to the heart of the Iroquois wilderness. While the globally contagious coronavirus in 2020 silently crept north and west of New York City into the more rural interiors, I seized an opportunity to travel myself for a week in October during peak autumn in the central and northern counties of New York State. From the Schoharie and Mohawk Valleys to the St. Lawrence River, Tug Hill Upland, and finally through the forested, lake-strewn, and ponded Adirondack Mountains. Just in time, too, because winter quickly closes down human interactions for months, beginning in mid-October often, for many of these areas. With the insidious, deadly virus in the wind, any activity or travel in central and upstate New York could be even more hazardous than usual in 2020. Quiet woods and strategically scattered dairy and grain farms and villages belie the secretive and unusually cohesive alliance of Native American Indian tribes that once roamed and hunted here. The Iroquois Five Nations Confederacy of Seneca, Mohawk, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Oneida, which later became six of the Tuscarora. The Adirondacks region of New York State was one of the last wildernesses in the eastern U.S. to concede Native American sovereignty to the mostly European colonists. The first wave of foreign settlers, missionaries, trappers, explorers, and soldiers avoided the harshly cold and insect-riven native paths on the fringes of their own tramping grounds that first led to habitations along the Hudson River, Lake Champlain, and the St. Lawrence River. Most of the Iroquois activists joined the British Tories in a failed hope that an alliance could drive away the pesky rebels during the Revolutionary War. After the war, their rigorous pursuit of treaties with the victors did succeed in preserving some Indian dignity but only in relatively tiny fragments. The fringes of the primitive regions of northern New York originally were also inhabited by Mahican, Algonquin tribal groups. The more structured Iroquois eventually destroyed their dwellings and defeated their young warriors in brutal battles as the Iroquois also did to the Cherokee and Three Fires tribes further south. The Iroquois alliance also may have been crucial to English successes in blocking French traders and merchants attempting to filter down the St. Lawrence and from Canada. These Native Americans also were a crucial part of early English successes in the Revolutionary War. New York State probably protected more settler loyalists to the crown than any other of the 13 original colonies. By 1800, New York State was the second most populated state of the new nation, still trailing Virginia in that statistic. In the 1890s, the state began acquiring land in the vast Adirondack wilderness, which now is the largest state park in the U.S comprising approximately two million acres. The name of this primitive place derives from the term tree eaters, a descriptive attributed to Algonquin peoples derisively by the Iroquois warriors and purportedly adopted by Samuel de Champlain, 
These mountains themselves are not actually part of the eastern Appalachian chain, but belong geographically to the Laurentian mountain group that extends into Canada. On the eastern side of Lake Champlain, the Green Mountains of Vermont and the White Mountains of New Hampshire and Maine are extensions of the Appalachian Peaks. first European settlements in this area were by Palatine Protestant Germans in 1713. They had been refugees from the religious warfare along the border with France and sought better farming in the aftermath of a big freeze on the Rhine River in 1709. In 1723, 100 Palatine families from the 1710 immigration were granted land just west of Little Falls in the Mohawk Valley. These frontier settlements were vulnerable to Indian attack throughout the French and Indian War and American War of Independence. Developed for agriculture, the Schoharie Valley became a breadbasket because of prodigious wheat production during the Revolutionary War. George Washington camped in Schoharie Town for two months during the cold winter of 1776. Raids led by famed Chief Joseph Brandt and his Iroquois allies destroyed most of the town of Schoharie. Additional tension between the ethnic Germans and New Englanders slowed early development of the Otego town in neighboring Otsego County. Efforts of Indian agent, trader, and entrepreneur George Krogan to secure lands near Otsego Lake or place of the rock in the 18th century were generally frustrated by both natives and other foreign competitors for the preciously fertile land. The Susquehanna River flows from its source, Otsego Lake, through the south part of the hamlet of Otego, and Otego Creek enters the Susquehanna nearby. Interstate 88 and New York State Route 7 follow the course of the Susquehanna.
The New York State Barge Canal, conceived in the 1780s and completed in 1825, effectively split the state of New York geographically between Albany and Buffalo. Native and settler pacification stuck as commerce was facilitated via a water lock system, also known as the Erie Canal, of boat traffic to the interior and linking the Hudson with the Great Lakes. McCombs' purchase of nearly 5 million acres of land in upstate central and western New York in 1791 followed the state's taking of territory from the Iroquois tribes that previously allied with the British. West Canada Creek had been the western boundary of Sir William Johnson's royal land grant, the St. Lawrence Iroquoian word is Canada or Canada. The river apparently was used as a trail to Canada in colonial times. Native Americans called it Teutarabro, meaning its waters are colored.
nearby hamlet of Russia and Russia Road was formed from the town of Norway in 1806 as the town of Union. The name was changed to Russia in 1808. Ye who love a nation's legends love the ballads of a people 
that like voices from afar off call to us to pause and listen. Speak in tones so plain and childlike scarcely can the ear distinguish whether they are sung or spoken. Listen to this Indian legend, to this song of Hiawatha. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Teenage years were spent centered around Naumburg, New York, on the banks of the Beaver River, about a mile from the confluence with Black River. Among early pioneers were Mr. Balmar, living on the north bounds of Casterly, across the Black River from where Nomburg, or Four Corners, materialized. He had been a famous guide on the Mont Blanc in France. His dependents reportedly still live in the town of Fowler, St. Lawrence County. A neighbor, Mr. Carrette, for his son, who eventually became associated with a government administrator by the name LeRay, and then, more importantly, acted as a land agent on behalf of Joseph Bonaparte in France. The French actually first inhabited this part of New York, and then, disheartened by the weather and conditions, left again. In 1824, Thomas W. Bent from Watson took up a farm on a ridge between the Oswagachi and Indian rivers, about 15 miles from neighbors, at what is still the frontier clearing named Bent's Settlement. In 1830, P. Somerville Stewart, now LeRae's agent at Carthage, removed to Belfort on the Beaver River. Immigration then began in earnest from Europe, largely facilitated through agents employed by Le Ray. A census taken in this area and New Bremen showed 247 European families of 1,275 persons classified as French again, Germans, and Swiss. These folks were believers in Catholicism, Protestantism, including Anabaptists, or Mennonites, and Muscovites.
from a poem by Caleb Lyon of Lyonsdale, quoted widely in earlier times, describing Lake Bonaparte. Waters and round with greenest woods and jeweled isles, the gift of Pan, unsought, unseen, where silence broods, unwelcoming the feet of man. Above the jagged hemlock's height, a sunset sky outpours its urn in ripples of the rosiest light. After Lewis County, my journey continued westward and north to Jefferson and St. Lawrence County and the Canadian border, tracking for some distance the St. Lawrence Seaway. The village of Alexandria Bay is a kind of American gateway to the Thousand Islands. Other nearby villages that often draw a sizable tourist invasion include Clayton, in Sackett's Harbor. The old enormous Bolt Castle, still unfinished after more than 100 years on Hart Island, is the anchor attraction at Alex Bay. Sackett's Harbor on the banks of Lake Ontario today bears no resemblance to the enormously industrious shipbuilding operations there on behalf of the U.S. Navy before and during the War of 1812. Twelve warships were completed at that time. Thousands of U.S. troops garrisoned at Sackett's fought two major battles during that war.
My week-long journey through New York State continued northeast along the St. Lawrence River Valley all the way to Clinton County, bordering Vermont. There I turned south and entered the heart of New York State, the Adirondack Mountains. Whiteface Mountain, at just under 5,000 feet altitude, lords the Keen Valley and the nearby village of Lake Placid, the real destination of my entire travel plan. Native Americans tracking nearby, especially in the Lake Champlain Valley, purportedly foisted names translated, it is white, an Algonquin term, or whitehead or Scalp Mountain, Mohawk terms.
The sleepy little town hosted two World Olympics and remains a tourist mecca for tourists and athletes of many stripes and nationalities. Winterscapes here are particularly appealing, but the autumn steals some of the glamour too. I managed to drive up the Memorial Highway to the peak of Whiteface on the very last day of its opening in 2020 as a stiffer wind and clouds gathered in the west forecasting a hard winter to come. John Brown Farm State Historic Site at Lake Placid is a home and grave of slavery abolitionist John Brown. 
seemingly an unlikely place to find a Civil War icon, John Brown moved from Springfield, Massachusetts to Lake Placid in 1849 to teach farming to freed slaves. Brown requested to be buried here and it was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1998. Homesteading in this wilderness was tough, and so, leaving wife and children, he moved to Kansas in 1855 to join his sons in an armed fight against pro-slave parties. In October 1859, Brown and his followers captured prominent citizens in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, and took control of the Federal Armory and Arsenal. The idealism wasn't up to the reality of the situation, however. Brown was captured, imprisoned, and convicted of treason. After his hanging on December 2, Brown's body was laid to its final resting place in front of his home, according to his wishes. Today, a Black Lives Matter display at the home is a poignant footnote and affirmation of John Brown's ideals. His vision, crushed initially, keeps on arising again from the ground. My adventure in the wilderness of New York in 2020 is complete as my journey continues south again toward my current home in Arlington, Virginia. The Adirondack Hotel on Long Lake peers down on a charter air service at the lake's edge. I see the same plane, I bet, as I pass Indian Lake further along. One water wonder after another. blowing harder. More and more leaves are gathering on a sacred earth where natives and foreigners once labored and fought. 